Hello everyone and welcome to this Lightarama tutorial. In this video, we'll talk about using the custom prop shape in the preview editor. Although you can draw your own custom props, using imported shapes from vendors can immensely speed up your smart pixel experience, and through the new edit options in the later versions of S6, custom prop shapes are also a game changer if you're using traditional lights for wireframes or other props. We'll start with importing custom prop shapes. If you're purchasing something from a Coro vendor, try these menus first before tackling creation on your own. The respective vendor is responsible for updating and maintaining their database, so if props are ever missing from these lists, be sure to reach out to that Coro vendor for questions. After choosing a vendor, you can either look in the categories for your prop or use the filter button. I'll import the Rosa Grande in this example. When the prop imports, the settings might say undetermined, so make sure to change it to LOR or DMX, depending on what you'll be using for your show. If the vendor has predefined motion effect rows for the prop shape, you'll see those included over here on the left. To see or edit the light placement on the prop, click on Customize Light Placement. You can use the plus and minus signs to shrink or expand your view, which in this case is a surface area of 534 by 534 cells. If the prop is large, you can use the scroll bars to see other areas of the prop, and hover your mouse over the pixel number if you're too far zoomed out to see all of the digits. The edit menu for custom props is represented by a grid of blue squares. We'll talk about two options in this example, and then explore more options later in this video when we discuss using custom shapes for traditional props. If you have a sequence with smart pixel props, and your sequences are taking a long time to load or your effects take a lot of time to render after each edit, check your custom prop sizes. By default, effects on the Rosa Grande are calculated over a surface area of 285,000 pixels every time you place an effect even though there's only 1,392 pixels in real life. Fortunately, this is an easy fix in the later versions of S6. You can use the shrink feature in the menu to reduce the prop size until the preview editor lets you know that the prop shape integrity would be compromised if you made it any smaller. With just two clicks, I've reduced the surface area of the prop to just under 18,000 pixels, down to 6% of the original size and needed render time, with all of the predefined motion effect rows automatically resizing as well in the process. The other helpful edit feature for this example is dividing pixels into string counts other than the default 170 from the import. Choose your pixel count and you'll see that the numbers will automatically divide, starting over in thousand count increments to represent the start of a new string. After clicking save, just make sure to select the setting that each RGB string should start on a separate ID, and you'll see the familiar list of start IDs and circuits for this custom pixel prop. If you want to make your own custom shapes, Click the Add menu and choose the top Prop option, select Custom from the shape list, indicate what type of lights you're drawing using the left side settings, and click on Customize Light Placement in the center. You can change your grid width and height using these two options. When you're ready to start placing your lights, make sure that the Active box is selected. If Auto Increment is selected, the pixel number will increase as you click. The numbers used and numbers repeated are helpful checks to ensure every pixel is only drawn once. If you need to draw a traditional prop, uncheck Auto Increment and you'll see all ones instead, indicating to the preview editor that all of the lights you're placing right now should share the same channel. When you're done, click Save and choose your settings over on the right side of the Prop Definition window. At this point, you might be thinking that this is the route you'll have to take if you have custom-made or wireframe traditional light props, and maybe you think you should just stick with placeholder bulbs and stars in your preview and just use your imagination when you sequence. With S6, there's another option. Let's use the example of a wireframe deer with white lights, one standard AC channel. We'll start by looking in the vendor libraries for a deer, even though it's designed for smart pixels by default. After importing the deer, we'll return to the Customize Light Placement Editor in the preview. This time, we'll use the Edit menu to convert the prop to a traditional light string, turning these 119 pixels into a one AC channel deer with a simple click of a button. After saving, switch the prop type from RGB to traditional lights, choose your color, and you'll see the familiar AC channel settings appear over on the right. But what if you need your wireframe deer to face left? No problem. Return to the Customize Light Placement Edit menu, use Ctrl-A on your keyboard to select the entire surface area, then choose Flip Horizontal from the menu. When you click Save, you'll see that your deer is now ready to travel left when pulling Santa's sleigh. And that's all for this tutorial. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.